This ruby salt bush is really the best kept secret in bush tucker. Look how lush it is. It's just completely covered in edible green vegetable. I'm sorry I sound all adenoidy, but I've got hay fever. Look at all that beautiful green stuff. It's so lush, and the tips too, you can just eat the tips on their own. It is full of nice green vegetable, a bit like asparagus, a bit like beans. I don't know how you describe it really. You can put it in noodles, in pasta, in anything. It's a bit more time consuming, I suppose, to collect really. I tend not to like the stem in the middle, I like the leaves, just the leaves themselves. So juicy, they're so lovely, the tender young ones on top, they're so tender. They do have a bit of salt in them, you don't have to add salt to them. Ruby salt bush, it's just so lovely. I'm just amazed that it's all free, this whole paddock could be completely covered in it. I've been planting seeds here and there. It's all just beautiful green vegetables and our first people ate them for thousands, tens of thousands of years. They're just so delicious. No salt is necessary because they've already got salt in them, hence they're called salt bush. Can we see? I haven't been watching the monitor. Look at that. All so green and yummy. I might spend ten minutes and pluck them later into the bowl. Well, after all, people used to pluck peas, didn't they? They used to shell peas. They did once upon a time when people used to talk to each other. Over there, I've got a whole bowl. It's enough for one person. It's all beautiful green vegetables. It's lovely. Let's go and look at the little seedling I just discovered. I've been spreading our seeds around. Here are the seeds here. Look, there's little berries. Little ruby saltbush berries, see? Can we see that? Probably not. That's the berries. And um, I've been planting them. Of course the birds drop some as well. Mm, yummy. Little berries are edible too on ruby salt bush. I'll just try and give you a close up here because they're a bit like ice plant. They're sort of nice flesh, rather fleshyish little leaves. Yummy. You can eat them raw or, in, or cooked. So much for intelligent focus. Come on, in focus intelligently. There you are, with the background. That tender bit there, that whole little tip there is very nice. See that bit there? Mmm. Just like salad. Where's my fingers? Come on. There you are. Just that nice part there. It's just so lovely and delish. Mmm. Just a lovely green vegetable. That's the nicest part. I mean, easy, easy, easy to pick part because that bit, bit on the end of the stem doesn't have the big uh, main, doesn't have the big stiff stem going through it. So you just sort of pluck the end bit like that and then eat it. And it's a tender and it's got flavour and salt in it. Yummy. I could pick them like that deliberately, couldn't I? Mmm. There's the edible berry, of course. And the lovely tender leaves. Can be cooked or eaten raw in salads. Very nice. I said we were going to look at the little seedling that come, has come up. Let's go and look for some seedlings because I've been scattering the seeds everywhere. Of course the birds have been scattering them too, thankfully. Here we are, look. I've scattered a whole lot of seeds around this past few months. And that looks like one. It looks like one to me. I have to wait until it gets bigger, but it's looking very like one to me if you compare the two. So that's very exciting. Very exciting indeed. It means, it means I need never ever be short of fresh green vegetables. All year round, 
And in winter time, there'll be berries as well. Uh, they have berries at various times throughout the, the cooler months uh, in cycles, I've noticed. So there'll be a source of fresh fruit in the winter time and spring and autumn. And look what else. This is ruby salt bush taken a couple of months back from a cutting. And it's actually growing now. It was very miserable for the past couple of cold months. But it's starting to respond and uh, show signs of life. And its um, leaves are starting to grow. So they can. I learnt that online that they could be grown from cuttings. And I tried it. I uh, also uh, online it so they don't like having their leaves wet, the cuttings. And they don't. I had another one that had, uh, I wet the leaves and they really don't like having their leaves wet. It died that one, it got all sort of mildewy or something. They don't, they don't like having their leaves wet. If you're going to water them, just water the, the cuttings at least. Uh, the adult plants don't mind getting their weeds, their leaves wet, <laughs> their leaves wet. But the uh, cuttings, uh, if you want them to do well, don't wet the leaves, just water them around the base of the plant. They don't like getting all wet when they're our cuttings. They do better if they're drier up top. So that's something for some enterprising nurserymen. See ya. Listen to that beautiful parrot in the distance.